Well, hi, boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be using a protractor to help us measure and then later draw some angles. I'm in my home links on page 179. That's uh, unit 6, lesson 10, measuring angles with a protractor. Okay, so you'll see that I have two versions of a protractor. I have a semicircle protractor that measures halfway around a full circle. And then I have my math template, which has both a semicircle and a full circle uh, protractor built in. Since my class was assigned uh, to use their math template, that's the one I'm going to use. But if your teacher is having you use one of these, you can use that too. Okay? So the first three problems here, it says first estimate whether the angles measured are more or less than 90 degrees, then use a half circle protractor to measure them. Okay? Now, since I'm going to be doing a lot of measuring, I uh, made a photocopy of my page so that it'll be easier to use and I'll lay flat on my uh, standing desk here, okay? So, when I look at these three angles for numbers 1, 2, and 3, 1 and 3 look to be less than 90 degrees. Number two, however, looks very much like an obtuse angle, okay? So that's going to be more than 90 degrees. So when I make my measurements, I want to kind of keep in mind that one and three are going to be less than 90, and two is going to be more than 90, okay? So I'm going to measure angle one, okay? So one of the reasons why I like using a photocopy paper is that I can easily manipulate it and turn it around, okay? Now, your protractor here is numbered 0 to 180 from one direction and then 0 to 180 from the other direction. So you can choose from which angle you want to measure this angle or which position I should say. Okay, I could start with this ray here, line up my protractor base with the first ray so that the zero degree mark uh, lines up with the ray and I can match up my vertex with my center of the base of my protractor here. Or if you want to keep your paper right side up like so, I can do the same thing but in reverse, it's mirror image. So I'm going to take my protractor middle the, and align the center with the vertex. I'm going to align the uh, right half of my base, the zero degree mark, with the other ray, okay? So I'm going to measure it from this direction, okay? So as you can see, my line here kind of corresponds or overlaps where it says both 60 and 120. Now this is where it gets confusing for some kids is that you have two measurements. Which one is it? Okay, well, the reason why they asked you to first estimate whether or not the angles are more or less than 90 degrees is that if you've already determined that this is less than 90 degrees, then the measurement has to be the number that is smaller than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees, which has to be 60 degrees. 120 is more than, so that means that would be the measure of an obtuse angle. Okay, so one or angle A is about 60 degrees, okay? And then you would use that same process for measuring angle number two and angle number three, okay? Now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna draw an angle for you real quick. And I'm gonna use my template here, draw a straight line. And then I'm going to use this slot right here over where it says 60 degrees and 120 degrees. I'm going to draw a little dot right there. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to show you uh, something about half protractors or half circle protractors. Here, I need to mark my center before I get too far along. There you go. Now I'm going to use my edge, which is straight, of my template as a straight edge. Okay. Now, along this base, I can make this be a line 
versus array, okay? And I can make this array as well, okay? So as we determined, an angle that looks like this, and here I'll highlight it in orange so that we can kind of see it, this angle we determined was 60 degrees, just like this one, okay? I drew it to be 60 degrees, okay? But I also have another complementary or corresponding angle made from the same baseline and the other side of my ray, which I will highlight. I oh, will do it in pink. This angle right here, that's 120 degrees. This is an obtuse angle, as you can see. It's wider than 90 degrees. This one is less than 90 degrees. This is 60. And if I know that the distance halfway around a circle is 180 degrees, and I know that this angle is 60 degrees, then that would make this one 120 degrees. That's why when I look at my protractor and I measure an angle, I see two numbers next to it. Okay? So I have to realize that the smaller number corresponds with the smaller angle. The larger number would correspond with the uh, complementary angle or the, uh, the other angle that makes up the difference of 180 degrees. But I digress. Let's get back to the problems on the front side, okay? So problems four, five, and six don't have any angle for you to measure. They want you to draw it, okay? So I need to draw an angle that is 105 degrees. Well, how do I do that? Well, to start with, I need a base. So I'm going to just make my line parallel to this line that separates us from the practice problems. So I'm going to draw a line like so. And I'm just going to pick a point like I did on my example on the back, like so. Okay. And then I'm going to line up my base of my uh, semicircle protractor. I'm going to match the center of my base with my point, which is going to become a vertex once I add another line segment or array. Okay, and then I just have to find the 105 degree mark. Now again, it's going to be in two places. Okay, now technically it's not, it's not labeled at all because these are numbered by groups of 10. So 105 is going to fall between 100 and 110. Okay. So here's 100. Let me zoom in a little bit. Here's 100. Here's 110. The little uh, hash mark in between, that would be 105. Okay? Now if I put a dot right there and I connect the dots, then this angle right here is 105 degrees. Okay. Now, if I did it the other way around, I could have found 105 on this side of the dial, on the left-hand side, and I could have put a dot right there, Okay, and I could have drawn a line to connect it this way and made the angle go the opposite direction, but this is where I made my angle. Okay, So this is my angle, that is 105 degrees. Now, they want you to label this angle as QRS, okay? So the vertex is always going to be the center letter or the middle letter, the R. So I got to label this, this point, which became a vertex once I added a, another segment to it. I'm going to label this R, okay? And then I have to put two more points somewhere on each line segment. Let's make these rays. I'll just put a little arrowhead on each. Okay. Now, I can label this one Q and this one S, or I could label this one Q and this one S. Okay. The orientation of those letters does not matter so long as the center letter, R, is the vertex. But since we read from left to right, I'm going to label it that way. Q, R, S. Okay. Now, I can make this other part of my drawing, my figure, another angle. And if I gave this point a label, 
say t, I now have two different angles. Okay, I have angle QRS and on the opposite side of that ray, I have angle SRT. And again, if there's 180 degrees in a semicircle, that means that the measure of this angle would be the difference between 180 degrees and 105, which without even doing the calculations, I can just find out by finding the position of 110 on my protractor. It's between 100 and 110, okay? Between 100 and 110 is the same distance between 70 and 80. And the halfway point between that is 75. Does that make sense to you? Do you have questions? Are you looking at this and like just scratching your head? If that is the case, then I didn't do my job very well with this video. But that's a possibility. So if you still don't understand how do we measure angles, how do we draw angles, how do we find the corresponding measurement of the angle that's on the opposite side, you know who to talk to. You need to ask your math teacher for help, okay? Again, new skills take practice. And sometimes it takes a while to get the hang of something. It's okay not to be good at something the first time you try it. But if you practice and with a little guidance from your teacher, pretty soon you'll be making and drawing and measuring angles like it was second nature. Okay? I hope this video was, in fact, a little bit informative. Uh, until we meet again, friends, have a good day. Good luck with this assignment. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.